You're watching Photographing the World Japan behind the scenes. If you're interested in learning landscape photography, you can download the first lesson 100% for free right now at fstoppers.com slash store. What'd you get? Coffee. It's hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have hot and cold. I had no idea. <laughs> After literally years of planning to film this tutorial, it was finally time to begin filming the very first lesson. Hey everybody, welcome to Kitano Tenmangu Shrine. There's a beautiful bridge back here. It's the perfect place to begin this tutorial, review some of the skills, and just stand in this amazing place. But it's very famous, fall colors are amazing, so there's gonna be a lot of people. Plan here is to shoot this area twice. Once around right now in the late afternoon when we still have really beautiful lighting, and then later when the light up event happens. Now, obviously, Aliyah and I have been working together for years, but Isaac, my assistant, has never filmed anything before, and this is our very first lesson. So I'm trying to manage my cameras, direct Aliyah, and keep an eye on Isaac as well, because I'm sure he has a lot of questions. Take a look at the progression through the entirety of Blue Hour. So very early, we're noticing the artificial lights, but we're not seeing the effect on the trees. As it gets later and later, darker and darker, you can see that the intensity of the light on the trees does increase, but also our ambient light decreases. And as we get further into the Blue Hour and into full dark, you can see that the artificial lights are now completely dominant and there's no more balance. Right now, I really feel like this is the perfect balance. The lights are good, they're not too intense. I can see that they're illuminating the canopy and it makes the green of the trees look great too. It's really nice. So we have fall colors, greens, reds, everything is here and the light's perfect. After wrapping up our first lesson, we had some amazing ramen and then it was time to check our work. Now to stay organized and get as much work done as possible, as well as train Isaac, I'm trying to edit as much as I can as we go. This allows me to see everything that we've captured and catch any mistakes that Isaac might be making. All right, Isaac, we have been through all of the footage from yesterday. You feel like you have a good understanding now of what needs to be done? Yeah, I've certainly learned a lot. What he was doing was, I think he was accidentally dropping the camera into auto ISO. And then he'd be like, oh, this scene's a little too dark. I need to make the shutter speed faster. But he would do it and nothing would happen because the ISO would compensate. So it'd go more and more and more. And so one time I grab his camera and it is maxed out. It's like 128,000 ISO shooting at like one five thousandth of a second. And I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? And he was like, I don't know. <laughs> so um, I, I said, you have to never go into auto ISO because you're just not, no. you're not there yet. One day we will use it, but you're not there yet. So I think- You will not make that mistake again. I won't. We have three different types of cameras. We have A7S's, an A7 IV, and then an FX3. And each one does things slightly differently and has slightly different button layouts. And so me jumping between them has been pretty confusing. And then the other thing is we also have three different types of lenses. We have Tamron, Sigma, and Sony lenses. And I've been using the Tamron and the Sigma yesterday. And the zoom ring is reversed. So like I turn it to the right on one of them and it zooms in and the right on the other zooms out and it's driving me mad because I keep picking up a different camera and then I'm like, what's going on? Oh, I'm turning it the wrong way. So I, I purposefully got all of this different gear because I thought it would be interesting to kind of review it and compare it on the way. But using it together is super annoying. <laughs> so hopefully by the end of this video, I'll be able to recommend different lenses and I would suggest sticking with one brand. This video is sponsored by Click-A-Snap, which is a brand new social media platform. It's one part Instagram, one part Shutterstock, and one part Google AdSense all wrapped into one. The most unique element of Click-A-Snap is that you get paid up to $9 for every 1,000 views your images get, which is honestly much more than we get paid on YouTube. And if you want, you can choose to sell your photos on the platform as well. Unlike every other social media platform with Click-A-Snap, you don't have to give up your image rights. 
You don't have to figure out how to game some algorithm and there's no data harvesting or selling to third party entities. If you're a photographer looking for a new way to display your work while also making money, join Click a Snap in the link below. The bridge Is that good, Nolan? <laughs> Day two of shooting. Day two. Are you ready? I am ready. I'm a little happy about the sky because it's a nice soft color, but it's also one texture, which was a problem I was having yesterday. So I'm like, get zero sky in these shots. Yeah, just don't shoot the sky. Yeah. Luckily, there was no sky in the next shot. Morning, everybody. It's uh, thankfully like 9 a.m., not 4 a.m. like usual. And we're around Bushemondo Temple, but the shot isn't about the temple itself. It's about the paths of red maple leaves. So when the fall foliage happens, these shots are most beautiful when it's already starting to fall. And something to point out too is you are allowed to walk on this path, but nobody is walking on it because they don't want to disrupt the leaves. No matter how many times I do this, I will always be amused at photographers all fighting to take the exact same photo. This is beautiful. It, there's really no wrong way to shoot it. It's, it's one of those things that you can just make sure you have everything. And even if you don't do the exposure bracketing or the exposure compensation, the sky is pretty white anyway, so it's not gonna feel like it's blown out. Back in post, Alaya teaches how to do a manual focus bracket. Since they're the same or very close to the same there, what I'm gonna do is draw a gradient in a mask. Using the gradient tool, we want it to be visible too invisible, really easy. So that's gonna sit right on top. This is pretty much in focus too. So what is our transition point? Well, our transition point seems to be right around this area. Same thing as before, create a mask, use the gradient. We decided right around here, so it's similar and we can just draw this. So we'll get this to this to this and everything's gonna be sharp and in focus. We've got a late start this morning, so we're going in search of coffee with our cameras to shoot some B-roll as we go. After another traditional Japanese breakfast, we were ready to roll. We are currently in Osaka. We just walked through this amazing, gigantic walkway with tons of stores. It kind of feels like Manhattan, but then there's water, so not Manhattan. I don't know. I love it. It's totally unique here. I am currently shooting a time lapse. After a fantastic lunch, we were moving on to film the only lesson of the day at Osaka Castle. Aliyah had been here multiple times before and he had a very specific image in mind, but that area was closed and right before sunset, we had to come up with another plan. Hey everyone, welcome to Osaka Castle. I think over the years, I've been here maybe over a dozen times, a bunch of cherry blossom shoots. So I was excited to show you a few of my favorite spots that are really reliable for wrapping the leaves around the castle or making the castle seem like it's floating. Unfortunately, that's all way behind me and that part's closed for now. When you're further back, it's easier to zoom in on leaves and the castle and have everything kind of be in the same focal range because it's so far away. What I'm doing right now is not necessarily ideal, but if it works, it'll be pretty cool. Now we were standing off to the side completely away from everyone, but when they saw the big cameras come out, they wanted to get the shot for themselves. This is nuts. I, can't, I mean, we were here when it looked much better a little while ago yeah, and there was yeah, nobody yeah. here. Exactly. Now it's crazy. Here's the focus. We can see it move here. Take this spot and then move to these trees up here. And this moves. Take that shot. Then we go here. Back in post, Aliyah did a much more complex edit. Let's just quickly take a look at where we came from. Started with this, and then we did some blending. So first, we focused it. Then we added light, 
and just did a little bit of cleanup there. The second thing we did was the finishing. So we added a smart object for camera raw to give it more dynamic contrast. One other pass with Radiant Photo just to correct the exposure and then a curves just to bring it up a little bit more. Then we did the distortion removal and cleared those objects. We took a lot of public transportation for this project and sometimes it was incredibly busy, but I have to say it was so nice. Listen to how quiet this train is. The next morning we got up super early to photograph one of the most iconic shots in all of Japan. We are walking to meet Alaya. Apparently we are going to a bamboo forest that becomes very overcrowded. So we have to be the first ones there. Something like that. I've heard it many times before. To get this shot, it's really interesting because it's a sunrise shot. The sun's gonna rise and backlight the bamboo. But in order to see it without any people, we have to be here at ridiculous o'clock. So you need to be here an hour or two before sunrise. Once again, Aliyah was right. As soon as the sun rose, we had to deal with people and traffic. I, I know it's a road, right? But the first time you come here, you really don't expect a taxi. It's starting to get really busy. Like all of a sudden, there's a group of 15 people back there. I also decided to shoot a couple different frames when I had people, so I'm not sure if I got it without any people, but I know that I have enough frames to piece together so that we can make it so there are no people in the final shot. We're so close to that green that we really just wanna make small adjustments, and we can do that by just tinting it a little bit, so tinting it green, and this is gonna separate those tones from that background. And if I go really dramatic here, notice that the warm part's still there. I have to say, as always, I was not excited to wake up early, but once the sun rose and I got to see this location, and then I got to see the finished image, I have to admit, it was pretty amazing. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss next week's episode when we get kicked out right before we get the shot. So they were standing there with their glowing batons, not happy with us. We were literally five seconds away from this whole tutorial not working. And as I'm reaching for my tripod. If you want to take your landscape photography to the next level, check out Photographing the World Japan at fstoppers.com slash store. If you buy the tutorial now, we'll throw in any other Photographing the World tutorial totally for free. And if you don't want to spend any money, you can download the first chapter 100% for free. <laughs>